There are some obvious but largely unimportant differences between junior and senior developers. And then there are some practical things that make a very big difference to what they do and how they do it. These are the things that really differentiate the two groups. But these things aren't always reflected in those obvious differences in terms of pay or length of experience. There is more to it than that. So what are the differences that really matter and what skills help you on the path from junior to senior? That's our topic for today. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe and if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. Most descriptions of junior and senior developers start from the perspective of time served as a developer. And clearly this is a factor, but there's a huge difference in the value of your time spent writing code depending on how and what you are working on and learning from. If you've spent a year or two working on a variety of different kinds of system using a variety of different programming languages and frameworks and working on different platforms, this is very different indeed and more often more valuable than someone spending the same amount of time building the same kind of system and using the same technologies over and over again. One consultancy that I worked in a few years ago had a rule that to qualify for more senior technical jobs, people needed to have built systems using at least three distinct technical stacks. That is language, frameworks, middleware, and ideally different operating systems too. There's certainly something in that. Until you've seen systems built with a range of different technologies, it can be very hard to understand what the fundamentals really are, the things that are more generally true and all too easy then to get lost in the technical specifics of your chosen platform, which is usually just one take and more limited in terms of value as a result. I think that without some kind of breadth of experience, you're probably missing valuable perspective on what you're doing and why the things that you do, do or don't work. Technical depth certainly has value, but so does technical breadth. And without some degree of breadth, Depth alone is usually not enough. This breadth of experience goes beyond the merely technical though. It's also valuable to have some breadth of experience as a user of software. Enough to know what you like and what you dislike about the solutions that other people have come up with. The best developers that I know take responsibility for the usability and utility of the systems that they build. So you have to have a view on those things as well as for the technicalities and the implementation detail. I've met people with a couple of years experience that I would consider senior or at least good professional developers and others with over 10 years of experience that I think of as junior in terms of their behavior and impact. What these people have is basically the same fairly narrow piece of experience repeated over and over again. I consider people like this to be junior however long they've been working. Seniority, for me at least, is deeply related to the person's range of experience. The big difference between juniors and seniors is realistically the scope of the problems that they're able to handle. Juniors need more specific, more detailed instruction on what to do. Or they need to have seen problems before that are almost the same before they're comfortable starting something new. Seniors have a broader perspective and this means that they have a better understanding of why the things that they do work and not just that they do. This allows them to more easily be able to generalize and adapt their knowledge and experience to solving problems, often problems that they've never seen before. The more senior, the more that this is true. A common response from junior developers and teams is that we would have been fine if the requirements had been correct. In reality, this is a mistake. The job of software development is solving problems with software, not translating detailed instructions in one form into detailed instructions in another code. The other senior junior distinction is that juniors are more likely to think of coding as the hard part of their job. 
while seniors are more likely to look at the problem solving as the hard part. We need skill in coding, sure, but that's just table stakes. It just gets you into the game. Even when the problems are well understood and simple, in general, software development works very poorly as an exercise in remote control with somebody else instructing in detail what to do. If I could instruct someone how to solve a problem in detail, then it probably would have been quicker for me to write the code myself than to explain how to write it to somebody else. Software development is a much more creative thing than merely translating into code. And it's a lot more error prone, given how easily even a tiny mistake can have such a huge impact. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple, Honeycomb and Visual Assist. Equal Experts is a multinational consultancy built on applying the ideas and techniques that we discuss here every week and applying those techniques and ideas to writing software for their clients. Transfic is a financial technology company applying advanced continuous delivery techniques to deliver low latency trade routing services to some of the biggest financial institutions in the world. Tuple builds software to make pair programming easier for people who work remotely. And Honeycomb help engineering teams deeply understand their own production systems through observability. Visual Assist is a highly rated Visual Studio plugin with features to enhance developer productivity. All of these companies offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, please do click on the links in the description below and check them out. As a result of the fragility of software, it's common for people just starting out either to be overconfident or too nervous. Overconfidence is clearly the more dangerous problem here, but underconfidence can get in the way too. Overconfidence risks junior people missing things that are important, focusing too much on the wrong things and creating poor quality code as a result. People like this are so pleased with their skills with programming languages and frameworks that they think that that's all that matters and miss important, sometimes critical problems in their solutions or designs. The problem is that software development is the kind of thing that's very easy to get started on, but very difficult to get really good at. You can learn the basics of programming in a few weeks, but the time it takes to get really good at it is measured in years, maybe even decades, because there's so much that you have to take into consideration to do a good job. Too little confidence results in people avoiding work that feels challenging to them or outside their experience, so their effectiveness has little room to grow. This means that they get less chance at learning these new extra skills. I was always rather impressed that Kent Beck added courage as one of the values necessary to achieve extreme programming. We need courage to begin to work on things that we don't yet fully understand. An important part of successful software development, certainly at senior levels, but also for talented juniors, is the courage to try out new ideas, even when there's a chance that your ideas may be wrong. One of the things that experience brings us is ways to accept the risk of being wrong, but to control it so that if we are wrong, the consequences won't be quite so disastrous. Effective learning relies on us sometimes being wrong, and learning from that. What's the definition of an expert? Someone is doing it wrong in lots of different ways. This model of development as a simple translation from detailed instructions into code is a very big problem, in big part because it has become systemic, often being reinforced in organizations that aren't particularly great at building software. And so it's widely seen as normal, but it's not. There are much better and much more effective ways of building software than that. And the commonality of organizations attempting to organize around programming by remote control further perpetuates this misconception. Despite being so common though, it's still wrong. I think that software development is much closer to writing than it is to production lines. You don't get great writing if the author doesn't understand what they're writing about even if the task was given to them by somebody else. 
Writers need to have some facility with their tools, the language. Sure, but they also need to have a good idea of their audience. Software's the same. The tools matter, but they aren't the most important thing. Understanding the problem and knowing how and why it matters are at least as important, and I'd argue more important than how to wield the tools. After all, we can use machines to check our spelling and grammar or their software equivalent. The things that are missing here, the things that seem to me to represent the real difference between senior and junior, also exist in my analogy of writing. That is, a good writer knows how to tell a story, how to paint an understandable picture with their words. They usually also have a few tricks based on their experience of what to do when they become stuck. But the main thing is their ability to tell a story. For us, our equivalent of the storytelling is the design of the code that we write. There's more to this than a simple grammatically correct organisation of statements, or even a basic understanding of the topic that we are addressing, or the problem that we're solving. The stories we tell, our designs, are about how we organise our thoughts into useful, compelling things that communicate meaning beyond sentences or lines of code. Whether they're in natural language or a programming language, it's a matter of how well we can organise our thoughts, how well those thoughts express our intent to others or not. Senior developers can express ideas, designs like these more clearly, and they tell better stories. And those designs will usually be a better fit to the problem at hand. As I mentioned, the other aspect of this is how to proceed uh, when the way forward is less than clear. Certainly, on teams that I've worked on, we judge a developer's seniority based on the sorts of problems that they could begin when they had little or no direction in terms of what the solution should be. For juniors, we'd expect to spend more time giving them some guidance and support on which avenues may be profitable to follow. On the best teams, juniors are still given room to explore solutions, though, and find their own way, but ideally with closer supervision so that they don't get lost and frustrated along the way. For juniors new to our team, we wouldn't allow them to start anything new, unless they were accompanied by someone more experienced, a senior who could guide them, ideally through pair programming. A significant rite of passage for junior team members in this position came when the team felt that they were ready to take on new, albeit simpler, pieces of work from scratch, and to make progress with some relaxed, more distant oversight and support. That brings me to the next property that I value in a senior developer, the ability to help and guide more junior team members. For me, seniority means little if it doesn't include helping to guide less experienced team members. And by that, I don't just mean being helpful by answering questions, but also actively helping junior team members and guiding their learning encouraging them to do work on things that are a little, but not too far, outside of their current experience, and giving them help and advice when they're struggling, sometimes before they even ask for it, sometimes not. We all need space to learn. Juniors can often accidentally challenge the status quo by asking seemingly simple questions and get the seniors really thinking. And seniors can help to guide junior developers away from some of the more serious pitfalls that they will encounter without the benefit of that greater experience. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoy our content here on the Continuous Delivery channel, do consider supporting us by joining our Patreon community. There are lots of benefits to that, including a very active and vibrant Discord community. And I'd also like to say thank you very much indeed once again to all of our Patreon supporters. It's through your help that we're able to make content like this. Thank you.